To begin this morning session, may I now invite Mr. Chandrajit Banerjee, Director General CII, for his welcome address. The Honorable President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, the Honorable Minister for Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises, Sri Praful Patel, Mr. Ropi Rawat, Secretary, Department of Public Enterprises, Mr. Chris Kopalakrishnan, Mr. B.P. Rao, Mr. Narayana Rao, Excellencies, Senior Government of India Officials, Ladies and Gentlemen, a very good morning and a warm welcome to this CII Global PSE Summit, which is being held today and tomorrow. A very special and a warm welcome to our Honorable President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee. It is indeed a matter of great encouragement and pride that we have you, sir, amongst our midst at this very important conference. This is an encouragement not only for all the public sector units which are present here, but also to us at CII, which is an apex industry organization, which has a full support and full inclusion of the public sector units uh, in our membership and in our daily work. Your presence here is really a signal Im uh, of signal importance and we would really uh, derive a lot of encouragement from this in taking our work ahead for the future. A warm welcome also to Sri Paful Patel, the Minister of, of Honorable Minister of Heavy and, uh, and Industries and Public Enterprises. It's been a pleasure and an honor working with you very closely over the last many years, and especially on matters of industries. And you have always taken deep interest, of, especially in the area of public, sec public sector and heavy industries when we have interacted with you. And your presence also is of great value to, uh, to us here today. Mr. Rawat, Secretary, Department of PSE, thank you also very much for being present here today and for sharing your thoughts and views. CII, which is the largest apex industry organization of the country, has within its fold a large number of councils and committees through which we uh, dispose our work. There are, uh, at, at this point in time, about 90 such verticals and horizontals that we have on different areas of work, out of which, over the last 20 years, there has been a very special focus on the public sector enterprises. And we have, in the last few years, established a separate division and a separate, separate council on the public sector enterprises within CII. And this work of CII with its dedicated staff has be therefore become one of our priorities in our, in our work as we work for the public sector enterprises within CII. And I'm happy to say here today that a large number, uh, almost uh, across the states, the state PSEs, the in, uh, national PSEs, are today a part and member of the, P, uh, of the CII in terms of their membership and inclusion. And just going beyond the uh, councils and committees we, uh, 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 that we have of the public sector uh, enterprises within CII, we today also have many public sector enterprise chairmen and their leadership taking, giving us leadership in areas which are beyond just the public sector enterprise work within CII. So we have many of you who are leading our work generally, say for instance in steel, in oil and gas, in energy, in defense, as well as certain other geographical work. When we go to a difficult areas such as Northeast, we see leadership also coming from public sector enterprises a chairman or uh, uh, chairman of the companies so this this is the way we have been working with the psus and i must also uh, say that while we see leadership from the psus from these uh, some of the work that i just mentioned we also see inclusion of them into a variety of other work like uh, for instance in real estate in hydrocarbons in power infrastructure railways mining manufacturing which is a very important component of our work capital goods so we see them we see the public sector enterprises who are well within the CII actually today networked into various areas of nation building, various areas of uh, contributing to the economy, and various areas of contributing to the industry as such. Uh, one important area uh, that we see pu the public sector very in involved within this work that we do in CII is on sustainability. And we see tremendous response today. Uh, from the public sector units uh, on the public, uh, sustainability de sustainable development work that we have been focusing on. CII has created a sustainable development center based here out of uh, 
uh, Delhi and we had the honor of the President of India giving the awards to public sector units of, on sustainability uh, last year. But what we have uh, uh, within, the uh, within the sustainable development uh, 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 institution that we have built, PSUs like the SAIL, BHEL, NTPC, ONGC, ONGC Videsh, RINL, for, have been really working closely towards developing the policies for sustainable development. And we have seen 20 PSUs have won the CII Sustainability Awards in the last seven years, a very commendable for, for feat indeed. Then also we have an, a, another uh, institution which is known as the Institute of Quality, which works for industry on quality standards and qu uh, quality uh, processes. And in this uh, which institute, which is based out of Bangalore, gives away what is known as uh, the Business Excellence Awards. And in this journey of business excellence, we have seen tremendous uh, participation of the public sector enterprises and they being acknowledged by CII, by this institution, very regularly in the way they have contributed to the area of, uh, of uh, uh, quality work. Co companies like NTPC, SAIL, BHEL, BEL, HAL have been an integral part of the business excellence journey, which has been a part of the CII's Institute of Quality. And we have also seen the, uh, uh, our membership from the public sector units participating very enthusiastically when we talk about uh, projecting India across the globe when we have gone and participated in various uh, exhibitions which actually project the, uh, the Indians, uh, India's strengths and India's business strengths. We have found a phenom phenom phenomenal response from the public sector. This all really excites us in working very closely uh, with our membership uh, which, uh, which from the public sector and seeing to it that they get very well integrated into this uh, uh, organization called CII. So we are very happy today that we have this response from all over the country. And in fact, this time we have uh, uh, our representations from also from outside of the country to participate in this global PSE meet. Uh, and we are very, uh, very happy to really take this mission ahead with your participation and your, your, your leadership. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, with that, I would like to welcome all of you to this uh, very important function. And we do hope that we have good deliberations over today and tomorrow. And a very special welcome to our honorable chief guest, the honorable president of India. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Banerjee. May I now invite Mr. BP Rao, CMD BHEL, to felicitate our chief guest for today, the Honorable President of India, by presenting a plaque and a shawl. Good morning, Namaskar, Honorable President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee Ji, Honorable Minister for Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises, Government of India, Sri Prafil Patel Ji, Secretary Department of Public Enterprises, Sri O.P. Rawat Ji, President CII, Mr. Gopalakrishnan, Director General CII, Mr. Chandrajit Banerjee, Chairman Midhani, Mr. Narayan Rao, Distinguished Guests from India and abroad, my colleagues from various PSUs, Ladies and gentlemen, it's a matter of great pleasure for CIS National Council and PSEs and for me to welcome Honorable President of India. Sir, you have been championing public sector through various portfolios in the Government of India. I also welcome Honorable Minister for Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises, Sri Paful Patel. Sir, you have been actively taking up PSU issues through various policy interventions in the Government eminent gathering of chief executives, directors, and senior management personnel from various state-owned enterprises from India and other parts of the world to the first ever global PSE summit in India. The Indian public sector has always played a dominant role in shaping the path of the country's economic development. Prior to independence, there were only a few public sector enterprises in the country with their presence confined to railways, posts and telegraphs, and ordnance factories. However, Visionary leaders 
of independent India drew up a roadmap for the development of public sector as an instrument of, for self-reliant economic growth. The public sector provided the much required thrust and has been instrumental in setting up a strong and diversified industrial base in the country. Both in infrastructure and core skills development, PSUs have been in the forefront. Over the years, PSU operations have extended to a wide range of activities in the manufacturing and service sectors. Today, public sector is an integral part of the process and dynamics of economic development of India. Owing to the robustness and resilience of Indian public sector enterprises, and in particular, public sector banks, India did better than most other countries in weathering the global economic crisis which erupted in 2008. I recall that when country began the process of economic liberalization in the early 90s, some of the experts were of the view that public sector enterprises would not be able to face the global competition. Many years down the line, the, these fears and apprehensions have proved to be unfounded. Public sector's credible performance year on year has instilled confidence and busted all myths. Today, central PSCs account for over 8.5% of the country's GDP, around 5% of the total employment in the organized sector, and over 15% of direct and indirect tax collections. The listed ones on the stock exchanges account for more than 20% of the total market capitalization of the Bombay Stock Exchange. In fact, PSUs are also contributing immensely to the inclusive growth objectives of the government. Sir, we have the ability, the vision, and the courage to adapt ourselves quickly to the winds of change which are blowing all over the world. There is a realization in public sector sectors across the board that we need to further enhance our competitiveness. Sir, you also said during the public sector day on 26 April 2013, and I quote, the growth potential of CPSCs should be strengthened by the greater investment, faster expansion, and technology upgradation, unquote. Sir, in line with this, we are making efforts to improve technologies people practices, and corporate governance. Nevertheless, we continue to operate under multiple constraints. While the government has taken several policy initiatives to strengthen the public sector, there are some issues which need attention in corporate governance, business mechanism, human resource strategies, joint ventures, partnerships, procurements, etc. Performing under constraints and with multi layers of stakeholders definitely makes the public sector projects more challenging. We have seen transformation in state-owned enterprises in many parts of the world, like New Zealand, Russia, UK, OECD countries, China, and many more. We intend to explore all possible ways to make Indian public sectors attain greater heights. With this in view, CIA National Council on Public Sector Enterprises, in collaboration with the Department of Public Enterprises, under Ministry of Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises, is organizing this Global PSE Summit. We will discuss and deliberate the issues and share the best practices amongst all stakeholders. Let me take this opportunity to thank DPE, CII, and my colleagues from various PSCs for their wholehearted support. I acknowledge the time and effort they have given to CII and National Council enthusiastically. To the distinguished guests from various countries we have take, who have taken time off from their busy schedule to attend this summit in India, we thank you for your participation. I hope you will find your stay here both rewarding and enjoyable. Let me once again welcome you all to the summit and thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you. Jai Hind. Honorable President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, Honorable Sri Praful Patel, Minister of Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises, Sri O.P. Rawat, Mr. B.P. Rao, Mr. Narayan Rao, Mr. Chandrajit Banerjee, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, good morning. It's a singular honor that Honorable President of India is gracing this occasion to add his erudite perspective to the discussions we are having today and tomorrow. I also welcome Mr. Praful Patel, Minister, of, Minister for Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises, and a warm welcome to Secretary Mr. O.P. Rawat. PSEs were created to enable the inclusive model of economic growth and were means of investments by the state in building the economy when it was most needed. For a country as large and as complex as India, the role of PSCs would continue to be important as stabilizers and growth drivers. The Indian PSC 
has evolved over the years into its own unique model, impacted by diverse factors, both global and domestic. While PSCs have been fly bearers of a modern, well-developed industry sector, they are also subject to a range of challenges. These challenges go beyond normal business operations and include issues related to driving and sustaining economic growth, meeting social objectives, maintaining prices and governance. We are indeed proud that many PSCs have emerged as global leaders, including the oil companies, the Maharatnas and the Navaratna PSCs. Various options have been considered to empower the PSCs more to bring in greater autonomy and flexibility. Government reforms to make PSCs globally competitive should be extended to state level PSCs. Not compromising on the basis premise on which the PSCs were created, the time has come to treat this very critical part of Indian economy on a level playing field as business entities as well. The government has over the years taken stock of the challenges faced by PSCs and has constituted teams to understand, estimate and draw recommendations which have been incorporated to modify the environment in which the PSCs operate. Overall, the Rungta and the Arjun Senkupta committee examined issues such as corporate governance and effective partnership with private sector. The cabinet has processed the Rungta committee recommendations and has demonstrated its support through steps such as fixing the tenure of three years for chief executives of companies to improve accountability, transparency and efficiency. These have been good reforms. CI has taken several issues through, the PS, through its PSC Council like the Public Procurement Bill and appointment of independent directors. We believe that the state should allow PSCs to exercise their responsibilities as well as respect their independence. We feel that Article 12 is restrictive to the competitiveness of PSCs. The PSCs must be treated as commercial entities. We urge the government to take a hard look at it. There is also a need to look at the models of governance that have been successful across the world and in India and attempt to replicate them. A single holding structure for central PSCs is also an option. However, this would need to be carefully examined from all angles given that many PSCs are currently functioning under different government ministries and departments. Another issue that requires consideration is unlocking the PSC assets, both in terms of physical assets and human needs. This is interlocked with the exit strategy of six, six PSCs. In several cases, prime land and machinery belonging to the PSC can be monetized, while in other cases, workers